write it down, take it to the bank, hammer the over. This is already the greatest class in Oklahoma State history, and it looks like it's just going to keep getting better. You are Locked On Oklahoma State, your daily podcast on the Oklahoma State Cowboys, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Howdy, y'all, and hello, all. Welcome back to Locked On Oklahoma State, your daily stuff for all things cowboy and cowgirl related. My name is Cody Stovall. I want to thank you kindly for stopping by to make this your first listen. We're available on all of your podcasting platforms, visually as well on YouTube. Find me personally on X at All Day O State. Today, we're partially brought to you by Fandle. Make every moment matter with Fandle because right now, new customers get 150 bucks back in bonus bets guaranteed. Get in on the action today by visiting Fandle.com slash Locked On. Meanwhile, we're going to talk about some recruiting because Oklahoma State has had a lot of success. We've had conversations in regards to this, this class and what it could potentially be. But I think all of us can agree that this is shaping up to be the greatest class in Oklahoma State history. It's hard to quantify what some of the, the classes were back in the day, of course. But since the metrics of your two four sevens and your and your, on, your rivals and your on threes, in this database era, we've continued to get better. And if we ascend to the top of the Big 12 and we end up in Arlington again, we're going to break the bank here. But you know what? I'm just a little fish in a big recruiting pond, so we're going to bring on one of our recruiting sharks in the country, our main man, Brian Smith. How are we feeling, sir? Doing well. Doing well. It's uh, good to be back on the show. Uh, The Pokes are somebody I've actually brought up a couple of times today on other shows as a team that I think will make the playoffs. So. I, you know what? I 100% agree with you. That's a perfect way to get this thing rocking and rolling. All right. So in your years, you've done this recruiting, scouting pretty much most of your life, right? So you're very well aware that Oklahoma State typically recruits in the third high 30s, 40s, sometimes 50, 60 range. And somehow, more often than not, we can have the number 60 class and still end up a top 25 team playing for a Big 12 title. This is something we've done two out of the last three years, regardless of what the beginning of the season looked like. And we, last time we had a discussion, I asked you if there's if there's some validity to the perception versus reality, i.e., you know, there's the perception that Oklahoma State is a school that's only designated for three-star style dudes. Well, I, I want to ask you, do you think maybe there's a possibility – that Oklahoma State's getting a little bit more respect um, when it comes to the the recruiting rankings and and things of that nature because, you know, typically Oklahoma State's not going to get a bump, right? If you commit to Oklahoma State, you're usually staying whatever star you are. But last year we had a couple players after they signed, they got bumped to four stars, which is something Oklahoma State fans have never, ever experienced. (laughs) <laughs> so, I mean, is, is, there, is there some validity to a, a realization that Oklahoma State's recruiting is better than a lot of people have thought over the years? Probably. I think that so many of these players coming to Oklahoma State, three-star guy, uh, he'll be a good player as a senior, help him out. But then they start as a sophomore and they're like second team all Big 12. Yeah. You give credit to coaches. I know that a lot of people used to bitch about Bama, for instance. Right. Bama would get a commitment, but you got to give them credit. They coach kids up too. Yes. If it's questionable and the kid committed to Bama, they would go up because they knew they were going to maximize it. Roger. It's the same principle. You want to be right at the end of the day. That's the objective of the recruiting analyst. True. If you go to a school, you don't trust the coaching staff. Do you think they're going up? No. So there is some validity to that. And also Oklahoma State, recruit like there's not a lot of analysts in Oklahoma but te- like the Texas kids have a higher chance because so many more eyeballs are on them that's right. just reality I you know I've lived in Florida now I live in Alabama like Florida Georgia Alabama there's scouts everywhere it's different you know Oklahoma doesn't have that many guys like you take some kid from small school in Oklahoma who's seen that kid play live right you know what I mean that's just that's that's just part of it man it's just eyeballs so I have seen something in my travels covering recruiting and seven on seven and things of that nature. Um, so I, I have a question for you in regards to, um, I, I think n- the national perception of Oklahoma state. Uh, do, do you think that, th- I don't know, the falling apart of the PAC 12 is going to help Oklahoma state get more kids, get more recruits uh, that can help, 
um, it, I don't know, shift the perception, right? Oklahoma State is starting to become a destination school. But if we don't capitalize this season, my fear is we go back to recruiting in the 50s. I don't think you could have said it any better. You got 20 starters. Obviously, Gundy can coach. He's got a good staff. But you only get one year like this. How, many, how often are you even going to have 15 starters return? Oh, I know, let alone 21, right? Yeah, like – not not often. You better not. I mean, part of this is what quarterback can't get hurt, can't lose your left tackle, your number one corner, etc. And you need to find your way into the top ten of the rankings and on ESPN, etc. As yes, early sir. as possible. They need uh, not just a victory early in the year, but like one where ESPN leads in. Like, man, Oklahoma State, they win forty-two to ten, something against a quality team. They need something like that because it's not a team you normally lead in on Sports Center or Fox Sports, or NBC Sports, or whatever. Yes, sir. So that's the key. You're right. And then there's fewer schools out west. They might be able to get another California kid. Arizona's in the league. Arizona State. They have a chance to recruit Arizona now. Utah's in the league. Like They, they just got the commitment right before we went on the show. Kid yep. from Corner Canyon High School. He's in Utah. Is that coincidence? No. They're going to play out there anyway. So you might as well recruit Salt Lake City in that area. The program he's from is at a really good school. I, I snuck a peek at the, at the film. This is a kid that can play in the SEC. He just yes. happens to live in Utah. You know, well, what I mean? this it's is just random, but whatever. I think from a recruiting perspective, this would be the second highest rated tight end of all time. And the highest rated of tight end of all time that came to Oklahoma State. Uh, he was a four star out of Collinsville. He stayed for one year and went to OU. Didn't oh. even play. Never even saw the field. So, well, he, there you go. I mean, They've changed their recruiting geography. Part of it is the Pac-12 disbanding. Yep. But I think part of it is they're just a consistent program. And they I think they've taken a little bit more of an approach, like to heck with it. Let's just see how this goes. Because you're not going to get the kid that UT wants usually in state of Texas. You're just not. You beat them for like one or two kids, but they'll beat you eight out of ten times at least. It's state U, it's Texas. I get it. So you got to find other ways to do it. Getting a kid from Utah is easier than getting a kid from Texas, no offense to the Utes. It's not competitive. Right. Yeah, yeah. So it doesn't matter where they come from if they can bowl. And let's be honest, there's not many teams, especially offensively, that have proven to be better than what the Pokes are at maximizing skill talent. Like the running back and receiver yeah, positions, right. like you could argue them with LSU and with Georgia and all, all these other schools that every kid's a four star pretty much, except for like one right. or two in their class. So I, I don't think it's as hard to sell now, especially with the Pac-12, because they're competing with fewer teams. That yeah, people care about. It's just true. Selling so, wide receiver at Oklahoma State has always been – that's really the only position we usually get a four-star a year at, right? Like last uh, – two years – three years ago, Talon Shetron was our only four-star. He was a wide receiver, right? Last year, Trey Griffiths um, had, had some incredible uh, opportunities in Texas. All right, b- before we shift – to Oklahoma State being part of the wide receiver U club and this new kind of four-star quarterback trend we're rocking and rolling with. Why do you, what are you hearing as far as why the the perception of Oklahoma State is changing from a high school coaches, seven on seven coaches perspective? Because I do know there was a while there where the coaches were hesitant to send their kids to Stillwater. But that has clearly been changing. I've been hearing it in, in my travels covering seven on seven and stuff. But I, I do a, a, a little bit that you do. So I, I wanted to get your take on that before we shifted gears here. I think it's pretty much one point. The portal has wrecked high school kids. And certain programs, whether it's fair or not, you, you know who they are, the Ohio State's, Georgia's, LSU's of the world, they will go recruit an elite kid. But then at that same spot, they'll go take a kid that's similar and two years older and your kid gets hosed because he's good enough to play at Oklahoma State or anywhere. Right. But you're going to play the more experienced guy that's been through two or three years of a college weight program every yep. freaking time. Yep. So I think that's part of it. I mean, not that Oak State doesn't use the portal, but they're not getting that same kid Ohio State does out of the portal or Georgia. You know, right. they, they selectively pick. So that's going to help them a little bit. And I still think it's – the branding, like this is what we're doing. They're going after kids that they may not have 10 years ago. Maybe they got right. other guys recruiting them too. I mean, that's relationships are huge in recruiting, but they're getting like, like, what is it? Three, four years in a row. Now they've gotten a quarterback that's pretty highly rated. Yes. 
So it's part of it's just you got to give credit to the staff and Gundy for getting it done, too. It's a nice combination there. They, fewer problems from the big boys. There are a lot of kids. They just want to play. Right. And then at the same time, man, they, they're putting in the work. Absolutely. I love it, Brian. All right, buddy. Well, hey, we're going to we're going to shift gears. But real quick before we do, ladies and gentlemen, we've been talking about Monopoly Go and how you can get in on the action, have bragging rights, have some fun with your friends. We all know Monopoly is, is the funnest game you can play with your family and have that bragging rights. Well, now you can do it on the go. Right now with Monopoly Go, you 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 got you got to get rocking and rolling, guys. You can team up with friends. You can get in on time tournaments. You can work together to build each other's boards. And the more you win together, the more awesome prizes you get to unlock. They have unique stickers you can trade with, and you can complete albums for big prizes. They've got cool new playing pieces to travel around the boards with. You already know they've got the emojis and stuff that you can give your friends a hard time with. This is my favorite part. It feels new and exciting every day with constantly changing tournaments and challenges. They have everything you need to have those bragging rights. There's always new timed events that help you win, like massive multipliers for everything you win on rent freezies. There's always something fun to discover with Monopoly Go. So uh, go get it rocking and rolling today. Download it for free on Google Play or the App Store. Go get your game on with some Monopoly. All right, buddy. Now we get to, to shift gears a little bit and talk about the particular individuals that Oklahoma State has picked up since the last time we had conversations. And I will say I'm greatly appreciative uh, for you um, because, you know, you've been you've been really awesome about sending me messages and having conversations throughout the, the course of the recruiting process, right? But whenever you look at some of these guys, me and you've talked about Jalen Beckley, me and you've talked about uh, some of the previous guys that we had. Obviously, Adam Schobel is going to be the big ticket item here, but wide receiver you. Oklahoma State has a claim to it, like you mentioned with the, uh, the Ohio States of the world, with the Georgias of the world. We definitely have a claim up there. And now, Casey Dunn, for whatever we want to say about his offensive quarter, offensive coordinator capabilities, I mean, I'm not going to get into that. I could, I could go 30 minutes on that alone. But from a wide receiver perspective, getting them to Stillwater, getting them to the NFL from Stillwater has not been an issue for Casey Dunn. But recently, we've had so many upperclassmen, we haven't really had to take. Like last year, we took one receiver, one. The year before, I think we took like two or three this year, we're going pretty heavy on wide receiver. And from what I've gathered, dude, it's impressive. It is impressive. So out of the wide receivers um, that, that we've picked up the few, I think it's three since the last time we talked, which one kind of uh, stands out as maybe the most maybe underrated of the bunch? Well, I mean, it depends on how you want to look at it. But like Capel or, you know, is it Perez? Yeah. When you're having the discussion and you're not sure, that's the most quality thing about it because you've got, got guys. It could be one game the Perez ends up being the best player. Maybe it's Capel. Maybe it's somebody else. You're not worried about just one guy if you're a defense. You're worried about three or four. In Oklahoma State, when they're good, as, as you've noted, they have several guys. So I like Capel a lot. I think he can play defense. I think he can play offense, whatever. Perez is a guy that's really athletic. They're both San Antonio kids, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever you want to do. And slot – Outside, like Capel play whatever. He's just a football player. I, I, yeah, I just Capel like can play on general. defense. Yeah, he can, he can do whatever. They list him as an athlete on some sites. Yep. Whatever. Uh, I like the Lopez kid a lot. He's an Oklahoma kid. I, you know, this is an easy way to look at Oklahoma State's program historically when they're good because they have multiple guys that can beat you after the catch. They're twitchy. They're really intelligent. Like the Lopez kid. He's – I know this is probably not fair. T.J. Hushmanzada was a guy that's kind of like him that he just didn't always expect it to happen the way it did. He'd make two, three guys miss, bounce off another guy and score. Lopez has got a little bit of that in his game. I'm not saying he's T.J. Hushmanzada. Don't get me yeah, wrong. Yeah, yeah. Hey, but, I've, already, I've already dubbed uh, Matreo Lopez as the king of elusivity. Bro, oh, he's, he's, it's weird how he kind of nimbly finds his way through traffic. His film's fun. It's dude, just yeah, exactly. It's like, dude, he's hard to tackle in a phone booth. Right? Yep. It's 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 incredible the stuff he can get out of. Uh, you mentioned you know Capel could literally play almost almost anywhere. Uh, but when you look at Jaden Press too, it's, uh, to me it's very similar. 
to Matrell Lopez, right? They have a lot of the same games, a lot of the vers- uh, elusive, elusivity uh, built into their games. But the thing that I think uh, differentiated the two was his ability, all right, Matro- uh, 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 Jaden Perez, his ability to tightrope the sidelines. So I watched some of the right. film yesterday. You'll have to go check it. You may remember what I'm talking about. Uh, it's like the eight-minute mark into his highlight film off of um, Huddle. He runs down the sidelines on a wheel route, catches a little bit of a wheel route, goes up the sideline. He stiff arms six people and takes it to the house. And he's only 5'11", 160 pounds. Like, how does how does a 5'11", 160-pound wide receiver stiff arm multiple DBs all the way to the house? It just it tells me that he's physiologically way ahead of where he should be. And this is the beauty of it to me. Oklahoma State used to have to get dudes, develop them right. Hopefully they can play by their junior year. We're getting guys that are fast enough, big enough, elusive enough to contribute almost immediately. I think Brennan Presley, his game opened up a lot of doors for Oklahoma State. Well, that's part of it too. Kids want to see guys that make plays, that have at least a chance to go to the NFL, and they want to see it an exciting offense. Now, Gundy's proven that, whether it's a runner, whether it's a quarterback, whether it's both. So that also helps. But they've had some guys in the last 10 years, you're like, okay, he's good. Then the next year, it's somebody else. I think it's pretty easy to sell that. Like uh, a kid that probably isn't getting enough respect is the Cameron Powell kid. He's really good, too. You know, he, I mean, I don't know why he's not more recruited. He's, he's from McKinney North. It's just outside of Dallas. But he's their third or fourth guy if you want to go by rankings. And he can play. So... I've been in Houston, Dallas a few times this year covering some events, and the skinny I got on him was he's being designated to some degree by some schools as a possession receiver. So there's been some schools that have contemplated him potentially playing a different position, and that's why I think he's getting under-recruited because you know he doesn't have the, 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 the shake-and-bake capabilities that Lopez does or Perez does, uh, but he's 6'1", 205 pounds. But, you know, his, maybe his 40s, not quite what they're looking for. That's why he's designated as a red zone possession, you know, 50-50 ball kind of guy. I think that would be the only reason he's getting under recruit. But that's perfect for us. That's absolutely perfect for Oklahoma State and Casey Dunn. Let, let him get slept on and then watch him in the NFL in five years. That's kind of what Oklahoma State is known for, Kansas State, kind of in that, that mold, Iowa yeah. State. They've all taken kids from like Dallas or Tampa or Atlanta that – some local school that's more prominent, you know, I don't think we're going to take him. Yep. And then that kid turns around three years later, playing for another school, goes back and plays against the home state school and has a hundred yard receiving day or something. And you're like, yeah. oh, you know, we recruited that kid and didn't offer him. Well, so I think another, story. another person that will always owe a debt of gratitude is Ollie Gordon. Cause Ollie Gordon turned down Texas because he felt disrespected that Texas waited until the day before national signing day to give him a legit offer. And that's why he ended up at Oklahoma state. He wanted to go to Texas, but he, he felt they they very much disrespected him. Oklahoma state treated him amazingly. He comes here, does what he does. Now he's projected as like the number 26 pick or something like that. in the upcoming draft, he's going to be a top five Heisman candidate all day, every day. And then the following year, Lane in Cleveland, Straight up turned down Texas, and Texas offered him. I think. I think before we did, early, early, he was an early offer. So yeah, he had the OU, Texas, you yes. know, Notre Dame, Georgia, Madison, Oregon. Yeah. yeah. Same with David Cabongo. So you had you, the, the story of Ollie turning down all these schools to come to Oklahoma State. He has so much success. Now you're having dudes op- in the open just verbally say, "I, I don't want to go to Texas. I, I prefer to go to Oklahoma State." Again, you mean you've had this conversation. It's the season of capitalization, and it starts and ends typically with QB play. Oh, uh, sure. You mentioned you mentioned you know where you could be, could be an injury or so away. I don't, I, dude. I really, really, really feel like Oklahoma State's in a quarterback one A one B situation. If Alan Bowman goes down, I think Garrett Rangel is more than prepared to uh, carry the torch. I personally think Rangel is a little bit better than Alan Bowman. Uh, I think he has a bigger, a bigger upside. He, he throws a better deep ball. But Alan Bowman's a, a safe pick, and he has improved in the pocket, which I didn't know you could do. After seven years of football, I, I really didn't think he was going to take another step in the pocket. But from what I've seen and gathered, he, he definitely has. But you got to have a quarterback of the future. 
We had a four-star guy in Garrett Rangel. We had a four-star guy in Mayolake Smith. We had a four-star guy in Mr. Nebraska and Zane Flores. And now we got another one in Adam Schobel. The TCU legacy is coming to Stillwater, baby. That's a kid when I watched his film, the first thing I thought when I watched him just kind of woke up and passed. He reminds me of some of the California quarterbacks from the 80s and 90s. It's almost got kind of like a Troy Aikman build to him in terms of the frame, not the filled out, but he's six, four ish, 200 pounds or whatever has a nice over the top delivery. And he's got an arm. This is the kind of guy that Gundy and his folks can figure out a way to get on the field and be a really good player. Now, the good news is because as you've said, they've recruited other good quarterbacks, so they can take their time and bring him along too. Right. He's not going to get thrown into the fire. Right. That's that's good. Freshman quarterbacks are bad. That doesn't work well. But now you're it's it's just true. Yeah. Now you're in a situation. Okay, we've got depth here. Somebody transfers. We're still not in a terrible spot. Right. Oklahoma State is not used to that. Let's be right. honest. Oh yeah, no, not it's, at all. And it's it's good to see that. And with the kids they're bringing in at receiver now, they can be a pain in the butt for the committee to keep out of the playoff moving forward because they're going to score. Yes. I'm not saying they're always going to have Ollie Gard Gordon in the backfield, right. but right. they always find somebody good at running back, too. They've done that miraculously more than once here recently. And finally, they, they've gotten enough hype. I, I'm not saying they're going to get a ton of them. They should at least get a little bit better out of high school offensive linemen moving forward, too, because it's fun to be around an offense that scores a bunch. So up and up for the Cowboys, especially on offense. I love it. I absolutely love it. All right, so we're going to shift gears once again because – uh, I talked yesterday that we're not in a Utah position, right? We've lost nine transfers. Utah's lost like 23, 24. OU's kind of in, in, in a similar boat. We're the exact in the exact opposite positions. So I want to cover that, uh, obviously, a little bit before I let you skedaddle on out of here. I do know you're a busy individual. I appreciate your time. But before we move on to that, ladies and gentlemen, you already know the hassle of getting the, the hotels and the flights and all that craziness – you can bypass that because the buying tickets part of it shouldn't be crazy. Game time has you covered. And this is not just for sports, right? We could go for comedy. We could go for theater. We could go for music. Whatever you want, we got you covered. It's the authorized marketplace as well for the NBA. And it makes getting playoff tickets faster and easier. The prices in the game time app go down the closer you get to the game time. It's super easy. With the last minute deals, and the, the flash of zone deals built on top of it, you're always going to be winning with game time. When you look at the all-in pricing, it gives you the total up front, so there's no surprise fees at checkout. And the view from the seat is panoramic, so there's no hanky-panky of you getting put in the wrong daggone section. Take the guesswork out of you buying tickets, especially NBA tickets, with game time. Download the Game Time app today. Create an account. Use the code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply, but obviously, create that account. Redeem that code. Locked On College. L O C K E D O N C O L L E G E for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Ah, Budrodino. O U is, I mean. They are, they are they are what they are, okay? They are, they are what they are. Um, but we talked a, a little bit off air. Oklahoma State has 90% of their roster returning, 21 starters. We're doing well in recruiting. We're not having to go portal fishing. We're not having to worry about portal guys leaving. Well, you just mentioned, how many other schools in the country have four four-star quarterbacks that are all staying together? Like, when does this happen? That's the thing. Like Oklahoma's got peaks and valleys on their roster. Uh, I know one of their players I ran into that I knew as a recruit, I would name out, but like when he got there, they had some guys that were like walk-ons that were at least competitive at certain Roger, spots yeah, and yeah. they've gotten better and stuff. And they've got a good, they've got a good staff, yes. but their roster still has really big holes. And certainly D tackle in particular, it's not quote unquote, OU standard. And they're, they're relying on guys are going to have to buy out of the port. I did a thing on this the other day on my Florida State podcast. Florida State's got one of the best cultures going. If you're just buying kids, if something goes wrong, what happens, you know, fifth game of the year, whatever, something, you know, you just have a bad situation. How many of those kids that you bought out of the portal are going to be there for when the chips are down? 
this is what happened at A&M and that program oh, disbanded. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not saying it can't work, but your chances of failure go up just so high. And I just think that they're so desperate. Like if they had D-line, like they had like that, that traditional one stud there, they'd be yeah. really, really good this year. They ain't got that guy. And they're going to the SEC. I live in Auburn, Alabama. Now. I know what SEC practices look like. Auburn just went and got three D linemen. Like they had to do it too. Like, yeah, it's bad. Auburn's transfer class is looking pretty nice. <laughs> it's it's really good. But how many of those kids are bought in or did they just buy? You know what I mean? Like yeah. they're spending a lot of money. So they're in a situation they had no choice. Their roster's not even where Oklahoma's is. But Auburn's like the 10th best team, give or take, in the SEC, and they will give Oklahoma a run. So what are the Georgias and the LSUs, the Alabamas, the Tennessee? Mm -hmm. If you get through five or six games with the attrition that naturally comes with the game of football, right. it is a right. contact sport. This just yep. in. I'm just curious if the buy-in, and again, I think they have a good coaching staff. I don't think they're going to have the finish to this season. A lot of people in Norman think, and I'm not picking on them. I don't have any right. money in the race, but I've just seen this story before. You're better off to build through your high school ranks. Kirby talked about this after they smashed Florida State in the ball. Florida State had done the yes, same thing. They did. had to buy guys out of portal, do some things, and they've kind of shifted that. It's hard to do that over and over and over again and not have locker room problems and kids that are bought in. Oklahoma State's got the buy in now. They, they, right say, now, they do. I, like you said, quarterback. Opposite. We Look don't have all of the five star, four stars they have. Right. But the buy in in that locker room is crazy. That's important because even Georgia needs that. One of the reasons, like Kirby has turned down some guys I know flat out that are really good, but they had idiots around them or they wanted this kind of, they didn't want and that takes away from his, and he's like, yep. If yep. Kirby's doing that, that tells you something. Right. He's got more leeway than anybody. Mm -hmm. So, I'm just saying, like, I think Oklahoma will eventually be very good under Venables. I do. I agree. I do agree. But this isn't going to be the year. Like, it would take every piece of luck possible with the injury front, et cetera. They have too many holes. They're using the portal in certain ways that they may have to, but it's going to bite them. We'll see in 25, I think they'll start to ascend. In 26, they'll probably be the annoying team that you've hated your whole life. Agreed. I, but I think for uh, now, yeah. Well, and and them not having the divisions thing, I think that actually hurts OU. I think they would have benefited if they would have kept uh, the divisions. Yeah, because Georgia's going to just like Mizzou benefit. <laughs> yeah, Georgia's number one team, the number two and number three. Like it, <laughs> it, the roster is ridiculous. <laughs> so yeah, good luck to anybody trying to get the number one seed in the SEC if they had divisions. It's going to be Georgia. Fair play. Uh, okay, so speaking of just kind of uh, generalizations, so you mentioned that you think Oklahoma State can make the college football playoff. Uh, sure. Give it, give us a little bit of insight of that. Like, what what do you see that leads you? I mean, I'm with you. I agree. I think we should end up there. I think we have a very, very, very high probability to end up there. But from your perspective, what are you seeing that that leads you to believe that Oklahoma State should end up there? Well, we just talked about the portal. It's okay to go get a couple of guys, you know, especially you can get linemen or whatever, but they're not relying on a guy that isn't familiar with their system after spring to be the guy at quarterback or left tackle or D tackle or corner or whatever. Continuity will be elite. It might be the best in college football this year. Gundy has a quarterback that knows the system, perhaps two. two. How many yep. teams even have one? Right. And then they got Ollie. Yep. I mean, third down and one, you can – you can point to the coordinator on the other sideline and say he's getting the ball. <laughs> I'm just going with the I, – I, I look at right. the reality checks as the points here. This is not hard. So, and the defense has got enough experience. They may not have the guys that – you know, they don't have Reuben Bain at Miami or something, but they got some pretty good players, and they've all played with each other. They're not going to beat themselves. So, they should be in every game, and they got the firepower to win. Well, and to me, some of the beauty there is every team in the country is going to be targeting Ollie Gordon, right? Every Everybody that, sure. that, that lines up against Oklahoma State, which means Alan Bowman, Garrett Rangel, and this wide receiver core could have a massive season. Play action, go deep. Yeah, That's I mean, people are going to load the box. You have to, because if you don't load the yeah, box, you're going to give up a first down. Yeah, he's going to get he's going to get beat up. So Yeah. Yeah. I, you still have to play it that way. So it'll come down to throwing the football against key teams. Right. But at worst, this should be a 10 and two team. That's kind of I agree. How I well, 
And I think the biggest thing, offensively, I, I think we're going to be fine, right? You have seven returning power five starting offensive linemen. You've got Ollie back. You've got your, your tight end coming in. You've got two tight ends remaining. You've got all of your wide receivers still here, except for Leon Johnson, who just got uh, picked up by the Chargers in the draft. That was awesome to see. Uh, I'm actually going to make a, a couple trips out to L.A. to watch some of those preseason games. So that's going to be that's going to be awesome. And you already know that's one of the coolest parts of this job is you get to see kids go from you know uh, high school to Oklahoma State or from a D3 to Oklahoma State and then to the NFL. And that is so much fun when you when you have that connection and then you see a kid reach those levels, dude. It's uh it's an amazing feeling. And you've been doing it for a long time, so I'm sure you're used to that feeling. But it's still got to feel good every time. Absolutely. Rags to riches stories, you know, some small kid, 2A high school in Oklahoma that ends up getting drafted by a team in New York or L.A. or something. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Oh, hey, before uh, before I let you run, I do have a favor to ask of you. So, uh, Leon Johnson's brother, Gabe Johnson, he was a defensive end at w- Wazoo, 6'4", 240, you know, 4'6", 40. He's in the portal, right? And I know that he, he has a lot of affinity for Oklahoma State, and he's already got a few offers um, from some, you know, lower-level schools. But I was curious if you could take a peek at him and tell me what you, tell, tell me what you think, see if you see what I see. Well, I'll be glad to do so. I love it. All righty, Brian. Hey, man, I know that uh, you, you you got a busy schedule. You do this all day, every day. I appreciate your time. Let the fine people out here know um, how they can find you and why oh, you suck so much. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well said. At FB Scout underscore Florida on X. I also run Locked On Seminoles, talking a lot of recruiting in the Southeast and nationally, uh, polls, et cetera. But right now, my Twitter account is the most fun because – talking the transfer portal and all the recruiting that's getting ready to start with the month of May. This, this is my time of year, brother. Well, I thought I was going to let you go, but I do have one more question. Um, since joining Locked On and having to kind of expand, because you used to kind of be able to focus geographically for the most part on your recruiting. Sure. How has working with oh, hundreds of hosts and going through hundreds of recruits, because I highly doubt – You know, 15 years ago, you were worried about a recruit out of South Dakota going to Texas Tech. But now it is something that that you got to pay a little bit more attention to. Is it is it fun or is it a little bit stressful for you? It's fun, but it can be because not all film is equal. When I see a receiver in Florida, he's going up against a DB in Florida. You know what I mean? Like there's certain areas of the country that are just different. So it's hard to grade film in states that don't have a lot of players. That's really okay. Okay, see, I like that. That's a dang good answer. How dare you know what you're doing and be professional, sir? How dare you? All right, buddy. Hey, I appreciate you. You know, I greatly appreciate having you on here. I'll holler at you later about Gabe Johnson. And, uh, yeah, we'll do this again. This is fun. I greatly appreciate you, Bubba. All right, buddy. Have a great one. Later, boss man. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's all we're going to have for this one right here. As always, you know I love you. God bless. Go Pokes. Thank you for tuning in to make this your first listen. We're available on all of your podcasting platforms. Help me out. Hit the like button. Let's get this algorithmic thing rocking and rolling here. Share, comment, subscribe. My podcasting people out there, you know the drill. You're the glue that keeps this whole thing running. Do what you do. Leave a review. Hit the stars. We are out of here. Later, taters.